Okay, in this part of the notes, we're looking at these additional problems, which are vector application problems to physics, to give you an idea of how it is these vectors are used in, in problem-solving uh, applications where we need to include the vector nature of the motion. So in this problem, you have a plane, which you're told is traveling 250 miles per hour, and you're told that it's at an angle of 35, which take the angle of 35 to be down here. And you're told that the sun above is casting a shadow on the ground. So the sun above is casting a shadow on the ground. And that shadow is moving to the right as the plane is following, following that angle. And you're asked to calculate what is the speed of that shadow which would be the speed you would have to move at or run at in order to keep up with the, the plane. So this 250 mile per hour speed, we're actually going to make that into a velocity vector v. And you are given the polar form of this vector. So you are given that this vector is 250 miles per hour, comma, theta equals 35 degrees, right? So you're given the polar form. So basically what you are looking at is to convert this polar form into its Cartesian form, and the Cartesian answer of the velocity in the x direction will correspond to the speed that you have to run at on the ground to keep up with that shadow. So I will leave the rest of that problem up to you. Okay, this problem is very straightforward because this is kind of like what we talked about where you're given that a man walks two miles east. So uh, let's call that two miles east. Let's get rid of east and call that uh, vector a and say that's going to be 2 miles uh, positive 2 in the x hat direction. And 3 miles north, let's call that vector b, and say that that's going to be 3 miles in the y hat direction. And then, of course, you have your 7 miles, 30 degrees north of west. So how do we make sense of this north of west thing? So let's just put in a, well, let's do it down here. Let's put in a dot, 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 dot. So we have north, south, east, west. So it's 7 miles, 30 degrees north of west. So the way you do this is you, obviously it's 7 miles, but you want to read it backwards. You're, so you're north of west. So think of the west first. You're going west. So you think of yourself as going west, and you're going to swing 30 degrees north. Ah, 30 degrees, what happened? Oh, switch pages. Uh, you're going to swing 30 degrees to the north. So that's your 7, and your 30 degrees is in here right there. So that's the 7. And there's your 30 degrees north of west. So you again will break that down into its component vectors to the left and up. And you will do your calculation for vector A plus vector B plus vector C to get the answer like we've done on the previous pages of notes. Okay. And then finally we have a problem that is looking at resultant vectors to equilibrate or to cancel out the effect of the vectors that are in the problem. So what we're looking at here is like if you're looking down at a telephone pole that is sitting on frictionless ice. So it's just propped up. You're looking straight down at it and you have two ropes attached to this telephone pole. One is pulling directly uh, in the x direction, one is pulling at 15 degrees 
uh, into the second quadrant as shown here. And you were asked what third force would you have to add to this problem so that there would be no net effect whatsoever. So that everything would cancel out and it would be a, a, a tug of war that would be a stalemate. So we know that we have a force, we have pull, we have 35 pounds pulling to the right, we have 50 pounds pulling up and to the left, and what you want to do in this problem is absolutely break everything down into components. So we're going to take this 50 pounds and find out how much of that 50 pounds as a y component vector, so this force F2 is actually a vector F2. So we have an F2 in the y direction up, and you can calculate that using Pythagorean theorem and sine and cosine, and we have an F2 in the x direction to the left, and now I want to add a third force to make the tug of war zero. So there's it's perfectly going to balance out. So basically in the x direction I have two forces in the problem. I have a positive 35 in the x direction. I have a negative force sub 2 in the x direction. So you have to calculate what that is. Right? So I need to know what value this is. If this turns out to be 35, then you don't need to add a force in the x direction. That's, that tug of war is a stalemate. That's done. But if it's not 35, you have to find out how much you have to add in the x direction to make it a stalemate. Now in the y direction, it's actually quite easy. In the y direction, we know what we have to add. We have a positive force sub 2 in the y direction, so we're definitely going to have to subtract something in the y direction to have the tug of war in the y direction give 0. Once we have these two values, we will combine them to get a single vector, and that is the third vector that would balance out force 1 and force 2. So this is a look ahead. We're going to do more of this in the future, but again, I just want people to see where are we going with all of this. And then the last problem we're looking at is pushing into the ground and possibly breaking the ice or breaking through the ground. So if a force of 300 pounds is pushing into the ground, but it's not pushing straight down. So you have 300 pounds pushing into the ground at this angle of 25 degrees. How much of the force is actually pushing directly into the ground? In other words, if, if this were ice and it were going to break, the full force of the 300 pounds would not break the ice. The part of the force that would break the ice is the force in the y direction pushing down. The force in the x direction pushing forward would be acting, if there were an object that we're pushing on, would be acting to move the object forward, but that force would not be pushing down into the ground at all. It's pushing parallel to the ground. So the force that's pushing perpendicular to the ground is the force that would be breaking the surface, and you can use your Pythagorean theorem and sine and cosine, hopefully, to figure out that that is the 126. So, oh, we have one more problem. I think the last page is blank. We have one more problem, and that is looking at a rocket uh, that has a vertical velocity component with a speed of 2 kilometers per second. How fast to the right would the wind have to blow to make the rocket travel at 20 degrees to the vertical? So, in other words, without the wind, this rocket would just be going straight up in the air at 2 kilometers per second. Oops. Straight up in the air 
at 2 kilometers per second. If there is a wind blowing to the right, then what you will see on the ground, the overall motion, the overall effect, will be along this diagonal at 20 degrees. And again, you can use Pythagorean theorem and your right triangle to find out what that velocity vector of the wind would have to be. And hopefully that will be correct.